Hi everybody, this is a supplementary video to today's lecture on Lagrange's theorem. So remember Lagrange's theorem told us that if we have a finite group G, a subgroup H, then we know that the order of H divides the order of the whole group. And we want to give a, a nice little corollary to that here. It says if we have a finite group G and we choose some element, right, not looking at a subgroup yet, just an element of G, then the order of that element is going to divide the order of the group G. So remember, the order of an element is going to be the smallest positive integer we can raise that element to and get back the identity. Now, in some cases, we can't do that. For instance, if we're looking at the integers under addition, you take the number 1, all right, well, we keep adding 1 to itself over and over and over again. When are we going to get the identity, which is 0? Well, never. In that case, we say it has infinite order. But in finite groups, that can't actually happen. We know eventually, by, say, the pigeonhole principle, we're going to have to get some repeat and that first repeat will actually always be the identity element. So how do we know then that if we start with some element, we look at its order, it's going to have to divide the order of G. And what does it have to do with Lagrange's theorem? Well, it's actually not so hard. If I look at the size of the subgroup generated by my element, that's going to be, well, how many different distinct powers of x live in this group? And, well, how many exist? Well, I told you, the very first time that it repeats is when you get back to the identity element, which means you must have as many powers as you have elements. You have e, x, x squared, x cubed, so forth, up to x to the order of x, minus 1. If you went x to the order of x, well, you'd get back e. So, this number actually equals the order of x. Okay, but this subgroup generated by x is a subgroup, which means, by Lagrange's theorem, its order divides the order of g. So, by Lagrange's theorem, we know that the size of the subgroup generated by x divides the order of G. Okay, but this size of the subgroup generated by X equals the order of X, and so the order of X must divide the order of G. And we finish the proof. All right. So this is a really, really handily, handy use of Lagrange's theorem. It's going to allow us to talk about elements instead of subgroups, and we're going to get a lot of mileage out of it.